Hello and welcome to GeForce. I'm Julian here with Ben. It's always good to see you. Good to see you too. We have a lot to cover because there are a ton of games that are adding RTX technology to their suite of features. So let's just dive right into it with possibly the biggest PC game of all time. Let's talk Minecraft. Minecraft really does look absolutely incredible now. I think one of those titles that people wouldn't immediately associate with ray tracing, but it really shows off just how incredible a game can be utterly transformed when you enable this technology inside it. And it's looking absolutely brilliant here today. All of a sudden, what you have is beautiful translucent water where you can see light permeating through it. You can actually build an entire building and as the time of day goes on, you will see rays of light flow straight in. And it really does change not only how Minecraft looks, but how you can really change the atmosphere of different settings, different worlds you create. One of the three games that was announced to support ray tracing when it launched a year ago was Metro Exodus. And now we're also announcing this year that the DLC, The Two Kernels, is also going to be supporting ray tracing, but it's going to be doing it with some new ray tracing techniques. Can you go into detail about what the DLC is going to have? Yeah, sure. So this is probably a great example of just how developers are getting their head around how to use ray tracing in the best way for their games. I think we can both agree that Metro Exodus looks stunning when it first came out. But there is an expectation for the DLCs from the previous Metro games to really bring somewhat extra to the title itself. And I think the developers at 4A Games have really done that this time. Yeah, so now the Metro DLC is going to add in ray traced point lighting, volumetric lighting, and emissive lighting, which if I'm not mistaken, it's when things emit their own lighting, like sort of glowing, right? Correct, and the really nice thing about this is as those objects move around, the lighting dynamically shifts. And what we're really seeing here is how ray tracing can give a larger creative palette to really make sure games look just fantastic. So there's so many different levels of ray tracing. The least hardware intensive one would be uh, ray traced shadows. And one game that's supporting that is going to be the new iteration of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And you've seen it. I want to know what do the shadows add to Modern Warfare? As we all know, many of people's favorite COD levels are the ones that take place at nighttime. And there you have very specific light sources that create spectacular shading in the environment. So all of a sudden, Ray Trace Shadows becomes a key component in really revolutionizing how that's seen in the player. It really means that you see realistic, proper shadows that can aid you in terms of hiding, immersing you in that game world. That sense is amplified really with amazing shadows. One game that's got the full suite of RTX to a degree that I don't think we've seen before is Control, which is coming out August 27th. Why is Control such an interesting fit for all these different ray tracing techs? So I think Control is a great title for a couple of reasons. First of all, you have the team at Remedy behind it, and they are very well known with any kind of brand new hardware for really pushing what can be done in game engines. And what you have here is an entire world where the whole element is destructible, all of the areas around the player. And what you have with a combination of reflections, shading, global illumination, everything in there is CGI, Hollywood level film ray traced effects, but completely usable by the player themselves in real time. Control is a game that's bundled with uh, NVIDIA graphics cards. Another one and another ray tracing title that we can talk about is Wolfenstein Youngblood. So that game is launched already, but we're expecting to see ray tracing come to that. Can you tell us a bit more about Wolfenstein Youngblood? Yeah, sure. So Wolfenstein has got a, a great array of ray tracing RTX techniques inside there. The big thing is keeping that speed in place as well. So in addition to the ray tracing features we have there, it also features NVIDIA Adaptive Shading or NAS. And that really makes sure you're getting the very, very best frame rate in this game because you want Wolfenstein to be fast paced, to have a high frame rate, to really get the best from the Twitch shooter kind of gameplay that you're going for. But what you're seeing there is amazing reflections, amazing shadows in the game itself. Another game that has historically partnered with NVIDIA Tech to improve it as well has been the Watch Dogs franchise. And Watch Dogs Legion is also going to be supporting ray trace reflections. Now, are you from London or around London or in? I am from London, so that's right. So what's it like looking at this, you know, future cyber revolution London with these ray trace reflections? This is a personal favorite of mine because of the London setting. And to see the reflections that you have in the city now, it really feels like a grimy, rainy day in London. But the fact that you have all the characters controllable as well, it's that combination of the graphical effects and the gameplay that really makes this one to behold. And it really is a huge step up over what I've seen before with the game. I think it's such an excellent fit because, you know, these rainy cities with all this neon-like light, you know, the puddles on the ground, the reflections you get really make the city just pop. 
In a similar vein, uh, there is a rainy city here in the States known as Seattle, and a Ray Trace game is going to be taking place in that. I'm talking about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. So that game is going to support reflections as well, and how do the reflections add to that experience? Yeah, so I think again, this is one of the newer titles that was announced with ray tracing support, and it's all about giving the developers new artistic tools to make their game worlds not only feel more believable, but really add to the atmosphere that they're trying to achieve in the title. We have a city scene here where it really lends itself to reflections with the lights at nighttime. I think it's amazing seeing just how detailed reflections are when you have kind of a wet environment. Another game that made a big splash at E3 that I'm pretty excited for and that it's announced is going to be supporting some ray tracing tech is Dying Light 2. Can we talk about the ray tracing in that game at all? What's really impressive here is that, again, it's a game that has a very fast pace to it at certain times. There are elements of exploration in addition to the action in the title itself. And so it's acutely important that the developer has that ability to make you take in the sense of your surroundings. So you can plan where you're going next. You can plan your fast escape from areas as well. The more you're thinking about your environment in this game, the better that looks when you're actually playing it back or looking at a video of yourself doing this. I think it's interesting to talk about how ray tracing affects some smaller developers too, like Next Studios. They have Synced Off Planet is going to be supporting ray tracing. What do you see with Synced Off Planet? I'm personally super excited about Synced Off Planet. It's a small team, but it has the backing of Tencent, the world's biggest publisher. You're looking to evade zombie hordes in this game. It's very fast and frantic once you get caught by said zombies. And again, it's about making sure that game world is more realistic, from everything down to your character's clothing and how that looks with the different lighting, the different weather effects in the game, how shadows move in the distance, how enemies move past certain lights, which create different shading on different areas of the maps as well. Last, but certainly not least, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Cyberpunk 2077. Do we have any updates from CD Projekt Red come Gamescom 2019? It really is shaping up to be a revolutionary title. I think this is probably the top of many, many people's wish lists. And I think one of the best things to really think about this is it shows just how standard ray tracing has become. We were sat here a year ago introducing Turing to the world. We've seen many major titles really come out and now Cyberpunk is really the be all and end all of this. We're gonna see a fantastic sci-fi world that is living and breathing. And it's crucial that that looks its very best. You have neon signs, you have nighttime, you have mods on your own body. It's like the game was made for this kind of graphical effect. So from Minecraft adding ray tracing to Cyberpunk 2077 supporting it, it's just being adopted so widely now that this is the future of graphics tech. It's established. Yeah, undoubtedly. I think what you can say now is it firmly is the standard for graphics. Everyone wants to feature it in their game so they can make fantastic looking titles. Imagine where we're going to be towards the end of 2020 and beyond. I'm sure we have some absolutely incredible games coming up that will be those kind of titles that people just sit there slack jawed at thinking, I can't believe this is running on my PC at home. And ray tracing certainly delivers that with RTX. We hope you enjoyed this in-depth dive. We covered 10 whole games that are going to be supporting ray tracing. I'm going to try and get myself a cyberpunk jacket here at the show subscribing to our GeForce YouTube channel or following us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at NVIDIA GeForce. We'll see you here on GeForce.